Hello, I'm very thrilled to uh, have a conversation with costume designer Ariane Phillips, who is an Academy member and a three time Oscar nominee for her work on Walk the Line, W.E. and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, today, we're going to talk about her work specifically on Hedwig and the Angry Inch. So, Ariane, thanks very much for joining us. Um, I, I'm thrilled to have you here. The first thing I want to do is thank you for the items that you've donated to the Academy's Library and Museum. Would you like to talk a little bit about what some of those things were? Sure. Thank you, Randy, for having me in anticipation of the opening of the museum. I am so excited to be part of anything and everything, uh, you know, Ampus Museum. So I really appreciate being here and being able to talk about one of the most important films in my personal trajectory as a costume designer. Um, Hedwig is, I would say, probably at the center point of uh, the most meaningful, one of the most meaningful and uh, sustainably creative experiences that that uh, keeps on going as um, you know, the appreciation and the love for Hedwig 20 years later is not lost on me. So thrilled to talk about it. And yes, yes, um, you know, for many years I've been donating my sketches and visual materials to the Margaret Herrick Library with wonderful Ann Coco over there. And it's just been such a wonderful asset to be able to have a place where the work can live on and um, be there if anybody's interested in looking at it and it can be taken care of and looked after. And of course, in uh, in the vault of history, of our own history as filmmakers. So um, my journey in terms of donations uh, really started with uh, that relationship with Ann Coco. Um, and over the years I've donated many sketches, uh, some of which are Hedwig sketches. And then when I got news that um, the museum would be collecting specific pieces, costume pieces for their archive, uh, I think there was a ripple of excitement through our community and me especially because um, of all the films that I've designed, Hedwig happens to be the only film in which I own the costumes, which was part of my initial deal that I made with the producers given that it was a small indie film um, and uh, you know it was kind of to offset the lack of compensation I said well okay I'll, I'll keep the costumes and you know I've been holding on to them and um, you know here and there people will come over to my studio and look at them and and get so much joy you know you never know when you're working on a film how it will resonate with the audience and Hedwig is just such a special movie in that generationally people are responding to it. And it's become kind of a, a classic in its own kind of outsider way. So I guess it was very fortunate of me to be able to make that deal with the producers that I could keep the costumes and now have the opportunity to donate them to the museum so that future generations and our community, if people are interested in, can um, see them and someday maybe they'll make it on exhibition. And the thing about paper materials and um, textiles, costumes, is that they can deteriorate over time, lose their luster, their um, color, uh, the quality. So knowing that these costumes are being preserved um, under the curation of the museum is just thrilling. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. And uh, I just want to say that the, these costumes, even though they happen to be the only uh, set you have from your work, it's a great set to have because they are such iconic images. And I think they also are just fun. I, I, there's a lot of times when you watch a film and the costumes feel like they're just part of the natural story and you're not really paying that much attention to them, even though they are things that make an impression, you know, uh, subconsciously about the character. Uh, but in the case of Hedwig, they're, they're just such such definitive pieces that that immediately you get a new piece of the Hedwig personality every time a costume appears. And I know you had like 41 costumes uh, for Hedwig to, to do in that film. Just, just for John Cameron Mitchell. There yeah, there you go. Thousands of costumes in the movie. But Thank you for saying that. I mean, I think the thing about costume design is it's character development and character illustration. So 
The great thing about Hedwig is people have a tendency to see it more than once, kind of like Rocky Horror Picture Show. So, you know, you can, your second time or maybe even your third, if you're lucky, your fourth, you'll see different, you know, layers of story in there, not only with the costumes, but also with the wonderful production design by Therese Dupre. And, you know, I think there's the wonderful thing about John Cameron Mitchell as a director is he really um, encouraged us to l create layers of story and, and, and um, you know, whether it was something hidden or seen that would inform us the, um, in the making of the movie. So yeah, there are lots of things. Um, the story is, you know, such a wonderful journey that, um, you know, you might need to see it a second time to really get some of the, the high moments. <laughs> Or 22nd time, you know, depends. You know, some people need a lot of time to soak it all in. So anyway, Whatever it's, it takes. it's a movie that's fun to rewatch. Re I know that it's hard to choose among your children with me when you have 41 children in the representing John's, uh, you know, costumes in this film. But at the same time, uh, I, I, I literally gasped when I saw the, the uh, for lack of a better term, the, the hair or probably better to call it the wig dress. That's the hairdress. We call it the hairdress. The hairdress, the hairdress I mean, it's either, hair. either way, it fits into a nice uh, double entendre type of thing. I think that the fun thing about that is you can just see the sheer joy that he's having performing in that. The uh, terror. Yes. <laughs> There's a fine line between joy and terror, as we all know. And that's a dress, too, that I think the craftsmanship of that dress really shows because it moves in just a particular way and it just feels so organic. And I'm sure that that was uh, not the easiest thing to uh, put together and, and, and make work. Just just my own personal favorite there. Oh, thank you. I think <laughs> it's my favorites, too. I mean, if you think about it, John Cameron Mitchell as the director was directing every day in full makeup, wigs and high heels. So why not add a dress made of a wig? <laughs> it's too much. So uh, we have some uh, Polaroids that in some, okay. if, if somebody saw them laying on a table might just, you know, kind of casually think they were, you know, snapshots or whatever, but I'm assuming that they were actually reference photos that you were taking and uh, maybe some of them were for fun too, I don't know, but uh, they're really unique uh, uh, images from that uh, period of work. So le let's take a little, let's do a little slideshow of some of your oh, great, uh, Polaroids. Great. Yes. So one of the things, um, you know, I miss Polaroids so much. I, I always have a Polaroid camera with me on set around this time. And I'm a, I, I was just so marveled, like I said, that um, John Cameron Mitchell not only was starring as Hedwig, but he was directing himself. And um, here he is checking the shot before he's in the scene in full wig, makeup, and costume. And I was just you know, he popped up on the dolly to, to check the shot before he ran in front of the camera. And I was in constant awe of him. And I just love this shot. It's just uh, made me laugh with the, with the Chinese daily special behind him. <laughs> this is from a fitting. Um, this uh, costume became pretty iconic because it was on the poster for a while. And this is John um, without, of course, wig and makeup. Yeah, one of the things usually in fittings, it's always great when um, the actors are able to have the wig on, especially if it's a different hair color and the makeup. But this was, uh, I think, one of those days where, you know, John being the director was so overscheduled. We did the fitting without the wig. Um, and he's, um, you know, plain, having a good time in the fitting. Uh, and I just thought it was such a great kind of costume in process photo. This is from the set from uh, John Cameron and Rachel wearing that hairdress that we spoke about earlier. This is from the set of um, Wig in the Box, which is kind of like a video, music video within the film. It's just the one kind of magical reality fantasy moment. And we actually shot this, I was reminded, I think on our last day of shooting and it was we were doing it at twilight and the, our production designer Therese Dupre such a genius had rigged this trailer wall so that it would fall down and there are these um stage lights on the corner so here we are in between 
setups. You can see a fan in the background because it was hot as hell in the summer in Toronto shooting. And um, John in high heels, of course, taking a break, patiently waiting for his next setup. This is the you know, iconic Hedwig costume. This costume um, of this kind of repurposed denim kind of romper and this cape that mimics the Berlin Wall. All the art was done by this incredible artist, Miguel Villalobos. Hedwig, the movie is based on an off-Broadway play in uh, New York. And, and in the play, Hedwig only had one costume. I didn't design the play, but um, this was the film version of that kind of recycled denim costume that was so famous in the off-Broadway production. This is a scene when Hedwig is prostituting on in the meatpacking district in New York and Tommy Gnosis comes in and picks her up. And this is an onset photo that I took. Um, I was inspired by a fashion designer friend of mine, uh, Jeremy Scott, who had done this collection and this idea of the kind of one leg trouser. And so we did our Hedwig version. So, so John's wearing like that thigh high boot that he wore in the wig in the box costume. And what I would say about the costumes in general is they're kind of method costumes in that every costume I, had, I felt that I, that we created, I had to be in the head of Hedwig of how she would have created this for herself. Um, Cause she is a DYI character, a do it yourself uh, person. So um, so that's that's what this poet sh kind of shows a little gold razor blade that, you know, there's a lot of, of humor and um, kind of uh, wink and a nod in a lot of these costumes. So this is from the set. This is uh, at the end of the song Exquisite Corpse where Hedwig um, really just, I made this dress out of plastic. I actually, we had to make multiples of them. Uh, and they were wrapped literally plastic bags. And we sewed, we, we, we built up the plastic so much that I was able to sew trim on and I put grommets in it. And this is a scene when um, Hedwig uh, has really come to a point where she is tired of the, the artifice and uh, rips her dress and uh, it's the crescendo of the end of the film and ends up leaving the stage naked. So this is the stripping away of the artifice of this, you know, and, and gender. This is really an interesting conversation now that we're having culturally about gender. And this is really about Hedwig not subscribing to gender and just being true to who Hedwig is. Aha, the hairdress. So my partner in crime on the hairdress is I, um, I enlisted genius uh, hair design, wig designer and makeup artist, Mike Potter, who created Hedwig, the original wig and the makeup design with John back in the clubs of New York before it was an off-Broadway show. And Mike has been part of Hedwig's evolution from you know, the clubs of New York to off-Broadway to the movie. And then uh, we all were reunited on Broadway um, in uh, a few years ago. So um, Mike Potter, I, I enlisted his expertise once we sewed these kind of wig, wig wafts, they call wefts, they call them wefts, wefts of hair, kind of like a, a fringe curtain. And um, we, this was a Saturday, a day off it, during shooting in our hotel room in Toronto. And I think uh, John, John ended up just crying in the middle of this he was so tired <laughs> but um we were listening to loud music and and giving the costume a haircut this is a scene uh from set a polaroid on set from the menzies fair which is kind of a a riff on the i guess the lilith fair of the 90s um and actually this piece was designed by this really wonderful independent designer, uh, fashion designer uh, named Gray Ant. And he was generous enough to loan this to me for the shooting of the movie. And I loved it for its scale and volume and it's, it's oversized. So it's like a, a top. Um, you can't see the rest of the costume, but it was perfect for the scene and, and um, 
it was that was a beautiful day we were shooting so here we go so here's a fitting where john actually has kind of a stand-in wig so we could get a sense of you know what the hair would look like with the costume this is a costume in progress that we made for sugar daddy the the song uh sugar daddy when hedwig literally gives a quote unquote car wash to a customer at Bilgewaters. So there's John um, in a very enthusiastic uh, pose uh, during the fitting. This is a shot from the set uh, that I was lucky enough to get close in on of Michael Pitt and Hedwig on set um, shooting a scene from the trailer park. And I particularly, I love this Polaroid. The lighting just worked out beautifully. And there's a, there's like a, I love the expression on John's face. There's like a poignancy to this, this photo that is uh, so sweet. And here's a, from the same session of them, I guess I busted them, you know, I caught a private moment and then maybe they were rehearsing in between setups. I can't remember, probably. Um, and uh, here they are, you know, being, we just had so much fun on the set. It was so great to see these smiles and be reminded of that time shooting together it was really special. Here, here we are again at the monitors uh, for that wig in the box scene. Um, John, as the director, of course, in full costume with uh, Frank DeMarco, you can see right next to John, who's the DP, the cinematographer. And they're talking, I'm sure, about the shot. Behind John is Miriam Shore, plays Yitzhak. And behind Miriam in white, you see Stephen Trask, who's the lyricist and uh, co-creator of Hedwig. And uh, I don't remember the other people are, <laughs> unfortunately, it's been 20 years, but uh, crew members there. So that is on set. You can see we have a kind of pop-up over us. I think it was threatening rain that night, a humid Toronto summer. Here is a shot of John in between takes at the beginning of the song Exquisite, Exquisite Corpse in that plastic dress, which was really created building up layers and layers of basically plastic bags uh, and clear tape. Um, and then we put grommets and uh, I sewed in like a beaded fringe on the bottom. And this is uh, John's costume for Exquisite Corpse. Of course, we saw in the other Polaroid when he rips it off, you know, it's kind of the, the crescendo of, of Exquisite Corpse. Um, this is just like kind of an artistic shot I, I, I did on set with the cape from the opening costume from Tear Me Down, um, just, John is um, so photogenic and is such a brilliant actor, let alone director. And a muse really for me, I took a lot of pictures of John on set because I, 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 he was just so beautiful as Hedwig and I was so moved by his ability to seamlessly move in front and behind the camera. It's incredible. Here we are um, in that sugar daddy costume uh, behind the camera, probably getting a, a wig touch up uh, as John always, as people know on set, you know, actors with a lot of makeup have to drink water with straws and um, just an, an in-between moment on the set from shooting the, the car wash scene, the um, sugar daddy scene. This might have been a continuity photo where I was trying to, but maybe it was just an artistic shot. That wig always makes for such a great frame, frame on John's face. So you can see the costume close up. There's a little rabbit for pull on there and lots of crystals. I always say I was my own sweatshop on this movie. There are only two of us in our department, sometimes three. And so um, it was actually a really wonderful experience having just come off a big studio film to work on an independent film where I was doing everything and really helped me kind of recalibrate how important it is. Sometimes we get removed from the set as costume designers since we're always, you know, we're technically in offset position or we get removed from the making of a costume. So this 
what is such a memorable film for me because I was able to kind of be involved in all aspects of the um, costumes from creation to being on set. And this is Mike Potter, the genius wig designer and uh, makeup artist who created Hedwig's look from day one, from the nightclubs of New York City to off-Broadway Hedwig to the film. He was my partner in um, you know, crime and we were, you know, the costume is really only completed by the wig and makeup. And we really, really worked closely. I don't think I've ever worked so intimately with another uh, hair and makeup artist. So that was really thrilling that we were able to kind of create these looks together with different wigs. That's um, Mike again, Mike Potter, um, who played a little guest role as a uh, prostitute in the meatpacking district, a male prostitute, male drag prostitute in the meatpacking district. Uh, but I think he's in partial makeup there. <laughs> and Mike Potter again, um, he is uh, modeling Hedwig's sunglasses that we see in the beginning of the movie. He was my muse as well. And Mike Potter doing hair for one of the head heads, which are Hedwig's groupies. This is Paul, who is actually a longtime friend of um, John Cameron Mitchell. Uh, John had a lot of his friends play different parts in the movie. It was a real family atmosphere. This is Michael Pitt, who um, uh, in a fitting uh, for Tommy Gnosis, one of his performance costumes. Um, and Michael was incredible to work with. Another Tommy Gnosis costume fitting with Michael Pitt. And another one, I don't think that made the cut. <laughs> and this is a, a photo of Michael Pitt on set for that trailer park scene. And um, I, I, I love the lighting, how, you know, it's just by chance, by accident, um, that he's kind of out of focus and you get Kind of you can see the cables in the right corner of the set and then you can see that kind of painted backdrop in the background so you really get a sense of like the movie making aspect and and that's him as young tommy before he becomes tommy gnosis and michael pitt um as tommy gnosis uh, i i i believe that's on set because that's a costume t-shirt i don't think it's a fitting um, probably uh, in between takes and um, probably rehearsing guitar. He did a lot of rehearsing guitar. And there's Michael as Tommy knows this with these fabulous leather trousers we made for him, kind of as low as we could go in that Jim Morrison um, kind of tradition wanted these um, leather pants to feel like a second skin. And the way that Frank Marco was shooting it was in very low light. There's a, uh, you know, you also see Hedwig in this scene coming out of darkness. So uh, very happy with the way it turned out. Well, that was really fantastic, Ariane. Thank you so much. It is great to feel like we were on the set and at the same time, to be able to look at the detail on some of these Polaroids when you're watching a film, sometimes the costumes are so busy moving around that you don't really get to see. And so this was a really uh, fun way to, you know, concentrate a little bit more on your work and at the same time, uh, you know, celebrate the, the what was actually going on 20 years ago as you were making the film. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.